Welcome to March's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is Russian doll envelopes. You are given a 2D array of integers envelopes where envelopes i equals w h, which represents the width and the height of an envelope. One envelope can fit into another if and only if both the width and height of one envelope is greater than the width and height of the other envelope. Return the maximum number of envelopes you can Russian doll put inside one another. Note you cannot rotate the envelope, so nothing tricky where we can like flip the width and heights or anything like that. Now if you know what Russian dolls are, they're basically dolls that fit into one another, and obviously the bigger one will have to be bigger in every sense of the smaller one inside. So here with this example, uh, we can see our answer is going to be 3, because 2 and 3 can fit into 5 and 4, and 5 and 4 can fit into 6 and 7. Here we can see none of them can fit into one another, so our only doll we can make is just one because none of them fit into one another. Okay, so um, this is a definitely a hard problem. And let's just imagine uh, if we were to do this naively, we can certainly find every permutation of our envelopes and check to see if all of them fit into one another uh, by sorting it, right? And just check to see if the width and height are less each time. Uh, but that's going to be very inefficient. Um, and certainly there's a better way to do it. So say that we uh, we can already tell that since this order, the original order doesn't really matter, we should probably sort this somehow. And if we sorted it in ascending width and then descending height, uh, that could actually help us figure some stuff out. So let's, let's say that we want to look at this and we'll sort it by ascending height and descending width. Or I'm sorry, ascending width and descending height. So it looks something like this. So if we had this, like, let's say we had a DP array here. What we could do is, uh, since widths are already in ascending order, we already know that the next one is not going to fit into the previous one. So it's kind of already taken care of. All we need to do is look at the heights. And we can start off with three, add that in. And the next one, we can check our DP array and see if this four is less than any of the numbers here. And if it is, uh, we want to update that index number with this new one that's smaller. So four, we can see that it's not less than three, so we actually just add that. And what this means here is that two, three can go into five and four. Now, what about six and four? Uh, well, six, four, we can see four is the same as here, so we might update that four again. But six, four doesn't fit into, or five, four does not fit into six, four. Okay, so let's move on here to six, seven. Well, seven is greater than all these, so we can add that seven here. And this basically represents that two, three can fit into five, four, and five, four can fit into six, seven. And if you think about it carefully, just looking at these heights, it's kind of like we're looking for the longest increasing subsequence. It's almost the same algorithm uh, because we've already taken care of these widths by sorting it that way. All right, so let's, let's go with that approach and see what we can figure out. Let's start with sorting this envelopes. And I'm going to use a lambda function here. And sort it by the ascending height. I'm sorry, ascending width and descending height. Okay, so now that we've... Okay, so now that we've sorted it, we're going to create our DP array. And we're going to look through our width and height in envelope. So the first thing we want to check to see is what index number on our DP is this height less than or equal to. So uh, we can do that by initializing our i and n, which we start with 0. And n would change every time to the length of DP. So while length is less, i is less than n, uh, we'll increase our i unless if the height is less or equal to dpi, then we'll break out of here. OK, so now that we have our index number, uh, if this i is equal to n, we're going to append to our dp array the height. Otherwise, we're going to update our dp to equal this height, because this height is either equal to or smaller. And each time, we're kind of like trying to find the smallest height that we can use. Uh, that way, we can count for the next heights coming in um, to get the longest 
sequence here. So all we need to do at the very end is return the length of the DP. So let's see if this works first. And it does. So let's go and submit that. And accepted. So this would be uh, n log n for the sorting, but it would be n squared for this loop. Now we could actually improve this to um, n log n if we use something called bisect. And what we'd want to do is use the bisect left of the DP. And we're going to look for the height here. And this would also work. It's actually a lot faster. Uh, could be considered cheating because we're using a function here. Uh, we don't need height n anymore. So DP length of DP. Let's see if this works. Yep, so this uh, would be faster uh, because the bisect part is actually doing like a binary search rather than looking through the entire entire array. So this would end up being n log n. We do use O of n space with our DP array, but I think that's trivial. So yeah, so uh, this is definitely a hard problem. Um, the big key insight here is to figure out that we want to sort it by ascending height and descending I'm sorry, ascending width and descending height. Once you figure that out and see that it's like the same as longest increasing subsequence, it looks very easy, right? But coming up with this would be very difficult. So don't definitely don't feel bad if you had trouble with it. Um, otherwise, hope that helps. And thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.